Hi, I'm Scott at ediblemusic.com. If you've got the BX Master Desk, I want to show you how to use it, especially if you are a little bit unfamiliar with the mastering process. Once you are completed the recording, the mixing stages, and your song is ready to go, this is where the BX Master Desk would come in. And it's got all of the tools that you would usually make use of in the mastering process. So I'll show you how to move through the plugin and get your song into a nice mastered state. The first stage right here is just to turn up the volume. So turn the volume up to get into that green area there. Now, importantly, this isn't a volume meter. This is a dynamic range meter. And in order to get your masters to be nice and loud and compatible with the kinds of playlists that it might end up on streaming or on Spotify or wherever, then you want to make sure that the loudness level or the dynamic range is comparable to those as well. So starting to get into that spot there is good. Next up, we have a whole bunch of filters to make use of. The first one is the foundation, which kind of functions as a almost like a tilt shell. You can use it to emphasize the low end or to reduce the low end if it has too much. So if I were to reduce it here, I'll hear the low end go down. And if you don't have quite enough low end, then you might want to add more. So the foundation is an EQ filter, and then you would move towards some more specific EQ filters that you can use down in this tone section. Importantly though, each of these only has a maximum of about 3 dB of, of uh, boost or cut. So even if I were to turn the bass all the way up, it's not going to be too much to destroy the mix. I think that's a very smart design, just to help us be a little bit restrained. I want to keep in, in that green zone. And the bass, mid, treble, and presence filters move up the frequency spectrum from the lowest to the highest. These resonance filters are also EQ, but I'm going to come back to them in just a second. I want to show you the TMT compressor mode. So there are four different kinds of compression that you can add. One is the most aggressive, and then it moves down to four, which is the least aggressive. So let's just see how it compares between the two. And we'll move it all the way up just so that we can compare it. And it might be helpful mostly to keep your focus on the kick and the snare and see how the punch of those instruments changes. Kind of like three. Now the default is to have it at 93%, so it's a parallel compression that you can add. So it will solidify the body of the mix, but it will allow the transients to kind of remain in place and not squash them down too much. This meter here is showing you what is being compressed on the left and right sides. And the deesser is useful for cymbals and vocals. Now, the resonance filters are much more precise than the other filters that we've been working with so far. The foundation, which is more of a tilt to EQ, 
and then these broad bands from the bass, the mid, the treble, and the presence, these will have a much finer uh, cue on them because sometimes there will be these common frequencies where resonances just come out. It can be very useful just to get rid of them. But you want to hear what impact it has on your mix as well. I do think I like that one. And I like that one as well. So the 315 and 160 can get rid of some muddiness and the higher frequencies, the 3150 and 6666 will get rid of some of the sharper frequencies that might come pointing out of the mix if you don't like it. And the mono maker will maintain the mono signal in the lower frequencies. Sometimes if a mix isn't monoed in the, in the bottom or if it's is very loose in the bottom. It doesn't necessarily always need to be mono, but it can help to tighten up the mix just by keeping those elements that are pushing out, the kick drum in particular, and the bass guitar, just to be solidified all the more by monoing them up and having them push out of the speakers together. If you've got guitars, you would want to make sure that it's top topping out below where the guitars start, but you can come up a little bit. And then the Stereo Enhance sort of does the opposite. Instead of making the bottom mono, Stereo Enhance will push out the sides in higher frequencies. Let's see how we're doing so far. To trim that down just for the sake of comparison. And then last of all, you can turn on the limiter, the curve, hope the walk is steep. which That's will clip out those uh, frequencies that I might be um, Preventing the dynamic range to be as consistent as it might want to be or should be for streaming it. If there's too much dynamic range, then your song will feel too quiet. If there's not enough dynamic range, then your song will feel really tiresome uh, if it's just the same loudness throughout. It's nice to have some variety. So the goal here on the dynamic range meter is to have it somewhere between 8 and 6. And that's fairly common, maybe a little bit more dynamic if you have maybe a, a sparse arrangement, a very acoustic arrangement, and maybe a little bit of a smaller dynamic range, more towards the sixth there, if you have a dance track or something like that, or a punk song where you just are going full out the whole way through. But it is still nice to maintain a little bit of that dynamic range as you're mastering. And the only one that we haven't checked out yet is this THD, which stands for Total Harmonic Distortion. And you can add saturation onto the master if you want to have it pulled together just a little bit more. I'll show you. Here's how it sounds without. And this is how it sounds all the way up. Not an enormous difference. But if your song is feeling a little bit old or um, flat, then it can be useful to add some saturation because it'll liven up the program elements. And especially in the master desk here, because you've got all the program elements together, it can have a, a kind of a combining function that will bind the program elements together. Cool. 
So those tools that you would be using when you're mastering EQ and compression, DSing and limiting, putting them all together here and it actually gives you, by numbering these sections out, you can see that the volume is at one, foundation is two, and tone is three. By moving in that order, it helps you to approach the plugin by getting the volume up to a, an optimal range and then adjusting the EQ filters so that it can be pushed into the compression as effectively and tastefully as possible. So we can compare again now that we've gotten everything up. I liked number three at first. Maybe number two, I changed my mind. But try out Master Desk if you've got it, and especially if you're just starting to approach mastering, then this is a great plugin that will help you get started. Just follow the order that I showed you here, follow the order on the plugin, and allow yourself a bit of time just to play around with it and see how it influences the sound of the song that you're working on. I, I appreciate that a lot of the controls are not going to be very destructive, but they are very impactful. 3 dB, a, a bass boost of 3 dB is quite a lot when you're adding it to all of the program altogether. Any more than that would probably be a bad idea, but if you were to limit yourself like that in the way that the plugin is designed here, then it helps you out to stay in the lane of being productive and making sure that the final result that you've got is a good one. Try it out.